pleasure to have here uh, one of the greatest trumpets, trumpeter uh, in the world. In Ascona. In Ascona. We invited him to celebrate the centennial of uh, the birth of uh, Mario Bazza. Of, uh, <laughs> Roy Aldridge. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, gentlemen, John Fettis. Uh. Good morning. Buongiorno. Come va? Yeah. 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 <laughs> the place I teach you now, they got good banana and coconut gelato. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <coughs> and I told to the, the no, saxophonist the who played last night, Luigi Grazzi. Luigi. He went, he had banana and coconut. He said, yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> ITG. That yes. means you're a trumpet player. Yeah, I return. Uh, <laughs> your wife? It's my wife, yes. It should take so, a picture. So, so my theory is that you must be a little bit crazy. <laughs> to marry a trumpet player. Uh, it's crazy, yes. Be all right. Because, because all the trumpet players are crazy. Yes, yes. I'm sorry about you. I are already speaking about mouthpiece uh, trumpet. What kind of mouthpiece do you yes, use? Yes. Yeah. You remember you have played in, at the ETG conference some years ago? And you have played uh, around about midnight in all the trumpet style possible, like I'm strong, like Royal Dage, like uh, yeah, I remember. Uh, uh, even uh, uh, I James and uh, yeah. Mina Ferguson, everybody. It's uh, a great version. They are around about midnight that way. Uh, I don't remember. You <laughs> 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 give me a fair do, do you think that the young people, the young trumpet students still listen to Royal Dredge and all the old master like you have done? My trumpet students do. Uh, your, when your. I teach when mm -hmm. I teach in mm -hmm. the college, mm -hmm. I make sure that no matter what instrument they play, mm -hmm. that they know about Louis Armstrong, okay. that they know about Lester Young and Coleman Hawkins, mm -hmm. and they know about Charlie Parker. Because they already know about Miles. Mm -hmm. They may know a little bit about Dizzy. Mm -hmm. But if it's, you know, if it's bass players, I want them to play Louis Armstrong on the bass. Yes. I want them to be able to play Charlie Parker on the bass, Lester Young. So they learn something like um, Lester Young solo on Lady Be Good. Yes. Yes. Or they learn how to play da 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 Coleman Hawkins. Mm -hmm. Body and Soul. Body and soul. 1939. Mm -hmm. yeah. You were there? Yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I know the record. You came late. <laughs> ah, coffee for everybody. See everybody looking. <laughs> <laughs> it's early, huh? So it I I think young people now. No, they don't listen enough to the people that helped to create this music. But there is still hope. <laughs> um, because there are some that listen to, like, if it's a trumpet player, they listen to Louis Armstrong and they know a little bit about Jabbo Smith. Or Big Spider Bay, yeah, yeah. and they know a little bit about Bunk Johnson, and then they know about Roy Eldridge and Sweets Edison and Buck Clayton and Harry James and Charlie Shaver. Then they know a little bit about Dizzy and Fats Navarro and Miles and Kenny Dorham and Little Benny Harris and Red Rodney, mm -hmm. and then, mm -hmm. then I think it's possible if you know these things. You know, there there are times when. I meet a young trumpet player, uh, maybe five years ago, I was at the Monterey Jazz Festival, and, and Clark Terry was supposed to conduct, but he got sick. Mm -hmm. So I 
Do you want to translate? You have to translate? No. Okay. No. I'm just yapping. Mm -hmm. Okay, everybody understand? Yes. Yeah. Even yeah. Francesca? <laughs> she speaks oh, very well. Yes, yes. You, yes. you, can, you can speak in French anyway. <laughs> so, so I conduct the high school, the Monterey Jazz Festival high school band. Mm -hmm. So I heard one trumpet player playing, and I said to him, I thought when I heard him play, he would be a good trumpet player to study the style of Kenny Dorham. So I said to him, I said, man, you should check out some Kenny Dorham. That he was 16 years old. And he said to me, I'm not going to check out Kenny Dorham. I said, why not? He said, it will mess up my style. <laughs> and I said, you're 16 years old. You don't have a style. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so there are many young people. Unfortunately, there are many young people like that. Mm -hmm. But for me, I grew up um, idolizing Dizzy. Mm -hmm. As I got older, I started to listen to his influences. Mm -hmm. Roy Eldridge, Charlie Parker. And then I started to listen to Roy Eldridge's influences. Mm -hmm. Coleman Hawkins, Benny Carter. Mm -hmm. And then I started listening to their influences. Louis Armstrong. And then I started listening to his influence. King Oliver. So I can go back to the yes. mm -hmm. le commencement. Voilà. Come, go back to the commencement. <laughs> no, the, the beginning. The beginning. Not the real beginning okay. because that's Buddy Bolden, but stylistically, I, you know, I know what King Oliver sounded like because there's a recording of him and Jelly Roll Morton in 1925 right. playing uh, King right. Porter Stomp. Right. Yes. Da 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 Da, 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 da. It's not so um, advanced as Louis Armstrong. So jazz at one point was here, and then Louis Armstrong and Sidney Bechet <laughs> take it up here. <laughs> so, and I think I think it's important to study these masters because if you don't have an understanding of the history, you don't know what it is now, and you don't know where it can go with the future. You have to know the past. Yes. So Dizzy used to say, <laughs> you keep one foot in the past, you keep one foot in the now, the present, and an eye towards the future. Next! Okay, we all go manja. Sì, poi tradurre tu. Visto che ha nominato tutti i più grandi, puoi chiedergli cosa ne pensa di Lee Morgan e di Chet Baker? What do you think about Lee Morgan and Chet Baker? I will ask you the same question. <laughs> because obviously the, I think they are some of his favorites. I like uh, the black line in the history of jazz. Uh, the black the line? Is great. The, the black line? See, the black line, no white line. What do you and mean? The, the, the black people? Yeah, yeah. But they're a great white trumpet players too. Yeah. <laughs> and by saying I only like the black line, you miss out on much great music. <laughs> so I, you know, on Lee Morgan's very last recording, I had just come to New York, I was 18 years old, and I played on that record. And I sat next to Lee Morgan. And I met him, and, and uh, not too long after that, you know, Lee Morgan's style, Lee Morgan's style, he, Lee Morgan was very, very sassy. You know, and sassy is a word that they use with Sarah Vaughan. That was her nickname, yeah, 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 sassy. Yeah. But sassy means a little bit cocky, you know. But all trumpet players are like that. <laughs> See? The ones we know. No, I'm talking about all, all the trumpet players have a little bit of, too, maybe a little bit too much ego. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> because you know, Lee Morgan said, 
Lee Morgan said the trumpet is an extroverted instrument. Yeah. Extrovert. You have to be. And Chet Baker played beautiful, beautiful trumpet. Well, obviously, he thinks that Chet Baker is overestimated. Yes. <laughs> and, and I am not here to argue with you, but I just say, listen to everybody. Yes. You know, listen to everybody. Everyone has something to say. Mm -hmm. And beneath the color of the skin, we are all the same. Yeah, more or less. <laughs> well, you're the one that smokes, right? No, no. Where's the guy that smoked outside? Me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Bonjour, no. <laughs> Good day. Do you think so? I don't want to argue with you about black trumpet players and white trumpet players because if I say to you, Harry James was a great, great trumpet player, not only trumpet player but musician. Yeah. And you say, Harry James, uh, I don't need to convince you of that. Or if I say Tom Harrell right now is one of the great trumpet players in jazz. <laughs> iPhone. No, my baby. Your baby. <laughs> my baby. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We have one thing in common, we just <laughs> became fathers. You know, you know, underneath the skin, we all have to deal with the same problems. You know, we all have the same problems. And those problems are universal. It doesn't matter the color of your skin. So, yes, the main stylist in jazz trumpet playing are black. Yes, I would agree. You have Buddy Bolden, King Oliver, Roy Eldridge, Dizzy, Miles, Clifford Brown. Fats, Booker Little, you know, Freddie Hubbard, Lee Morgan, Woody Shaw, maybe a little bit of Don Cherry if you want to get modern. Depends on your taste. It's it's all subjective though. And I would be I would be an idiot as a musician if I didn't listen to great white European classical composers. I'd be an idiot if I didn't listen to Bach and Beethoven and Schumann and Chopin and Ravel and Debussy and Faure and Puccini. I'd be stupid. <laughs> So you have to, one has to listen to everything. And you listen to them, but you say, I like this. Okay. But I think you are missing a big part of the, a big part of the tarp de pomme. <laughs> you know, here you have, here you have the tarte de pomme, tarte framboise, tarte de fraise, tarte au citron, and then you have the, the, the uh, tarte uh, tatin, and then you miss out on the tarte tatin, tarte citron, tarte de fraise, you have only the tarte de pomme. So you must have the other tarts. Comprenez? <laughs> Because the tarts are good. <laughs> Cigarettes, no good. <laughs> so what you should do today is you should go home. Thad Jones tell, told me once, I said, Thad, Thad, I was young, I was 18 or 19. 
that? I don't really. He was trying to tell me about Puccini, because he'd love to listen to the melodies of Puccini. And I said, I don't really like opera. And he looked at me and said, you should go home and listen to opera. Simple. You don't like Chet Baker? I give you homework. <laughs> you must go home and listen to Chet Baker. <laughs> listen to Chet Baker with Jerry Mulligan without yes. the piano. It's great. Yes. So, you know, that's what I say. Very. It's okay? You happy now? <laughs> Next. I would like to uh -oh, ask, uh, ask you something about uh, uh, Roy Eldridge. Uh, what is your relationship to him? What do you think about uh, Roy Eldridge? I did that in an interview. I wrote what I thought of Roy. I wrote a whole long thing about what I thought about Roy. You didn't read it? No. <laughs> Oh, you, you read it. You're testing me. <laughs> if you remember, I don't. I'm old now. I can't remember. It's called C R S. I can't remember shit. <laughs> but excuse me, I, I don't. Excuse me. Um, but Roy Eldridge. Um, when I was in my 20s, Dizzy Gillespie play at the half note on 54th Street, and across the street, Roy Eldridge played at Jimmy Ryan's. Mm -hmm. But I always stayed with Dizzy. Mm -hmm. I was young and stupid, though. I didn't go across the street <laughs> to listen to Roy Eldridge. But later, I had a chance to play with Roy Eldridge. They did a uh, at Carnegie Hall, a town, town hall, I think it was, they did a tribute to Roy Eldridge, and they want me to play his solo on After You've Gone. Mm -hmm. So I have to learn the solo to After You've Gone. And then I see, when Dizzy plays, do you that come from Roy Eldridge <laughs> on After You've Gone. And Roy Eldridge, I think, was one of the greatest and most underrated right. trumpet players in jazz history. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is very, very, very um, powerful trumpet player. Mm -hmm. He's very stylistic. His style is individual. Nobody plays the trumpet like Roy Eldridge. Mm -hmm. And he's very creative. Mm -hmm. And the other thing was, he was always very competitive. You know, because back then they would have jam sessions mm -hmm. and everybody tried to do better than the other person. And Roy was usually the one to come out on top. But then one time Dizzy played so well it made Roy Eldridge cry. And after that Dizzy sat Roy down because Dizzy was um, very knowledgeable about history, very intelligent. And he said to Roy, Roy, what I'm doing on the trumpet comes from you and it it doesn't mean that what you are doing is not great so then they became good friends before that Roy Eldridge didn't like Dizzy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. maybe a little bit jealousy uh, but they didn't you know they fight all the time and then Dizzy play Roy Eldridge cry Dizzy talk they become friends um, and then there's a story about Roy Eldridge. You don't know. You don't know this story. Roy Eldridge used to used to ambush trumpet players. You know, at a session, you said, "Hey, Roy, come up and play." Oh no, I don't feel too good. And then he would get out his horn and wipe everybody out. <laughs> or, or they would be playing on the bandstand, and he walk in the club playing, and everybody look. Oh. But he was in Detroit. And there was a female trumpet player, and her name was Dolly, like, hello, Dolly. Hello, Dolly. This is Lewis. Her name was Dolly Jones. And she, Roy Eldridge, played, 
and have a battle with Dolly Jones. And Dolly Jones won. <laughs> and you don't hear about that. So I, 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 I just think that Roy Eldridge, you know, yes? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> ah, buongiorno. See, everybody look. Ah! <laughs> Looking for the lady in the white pants. <laughs> so Roy Eldridge, I think, was, you know, he was one of the greatest trumpet players. It's unfortunate that he's thought of as a link between uh, Louis Armstrong and Dizzy. Because you don't think of Charlie Parker as a link between Lester Young and John Coltrane. It's stupid. Stupid though. And my relationship with him, you know, I did a couple, you know, I did some concerts with Roy Eldridge when he couldn't play. So he would come to the concert and he would sing and I would play his solos. And we would talk about different trumpet players like Wynton Marsalis or Lou sold off, of, you know, some young trumpet player, and we sit and listen. Uh, I remember one time we were sitting in the club, and he heard Lou Soloff play with a plunger. And Roy just said, he's not doing it right. <laughs> because there's a certain way that you play with a plunger. I should I show you. This is, this is good. This is why I brought my horn. I knew something like this would happen. What's wrong, man? You want to close the door? Because yeah. we hear the machine, the yes. coffee machine. Espresso. La lava to media. What? Uh, dishwasher. Oh, the dishwasher. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You need to get one of those German dishwashers, the, 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 the Bosch. It's very quiet. Bosch. What's that with <laughs> Very expensive, though. So when Lou Soloff was playing the plunger, he played the plunger like this. He was playing with the tongue, go. Like that. Flutter tonguey. Mm -hmm. But Roy said, that's wrong, because what you're supposed to do is and you hum while you play, and it's a totally different sound. And then he showed me, like on After You've Gone, he said, it's easier if you play with these fingerings rather than... And I'm sure that he worked all of that out when he was with Gene Krupa's band. You know, if you're on the bandstand playing that every night, mm -hmm. you you have to find the easiest way to do things. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You know, you're driving on the bus, and for Roy, he can't stay in the same hotels at that time. He can't eat in the same restaurants. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like being outcast mm -hmm. because of the color of his skin. Mm -hmm. But he, you know, I think that Roy had some... And I don't want to say anger. I don't, you know, it's a mistake to think that he was angry about it. What, what, what the emotion is when that happened, it's pain. It hurts. Mm -hmm. It hurts you as a human being that other human beings treat you like that. And the anger is a defense to keep from feeling the hurt or the pain. So I think, you know, I think Roy had a lot of pain inside, as did all the mus black musicians who played at that time. Um, but this is one way to get past the pain. Okay? I don't mean to get too heavy, but... <laughs> I believe that Francesca has a question for me. No, I don't. Yesterday, I had an interview with you, so 
I know what I need. Oh, it's very short, though. <laughs> So tell us about what your, about your tell us about your boyfriend. <laughs> no, what about your concert of yesterday? I was pretty happy with the concert, except sometimes the sound guy changed the sound on the on the stage and it, it drives me crazy because there's no reason to change it. Yeah. So I am playing and everything is okay and then a second later Everything is not okay because he changed the sound. He turned it down. So I, at one point at the beginning, I stopped and looked at him. Come on, man. And then he turned it up. And then he did it again later, and I said, oh, it's okay. But I enjoyed playing with the saxophone player. Dotto told me about the saxophone player. He said, he's very good. So I said, come on and play. So I enjoy, you know, um, the guitar player from Australia mm -hmm. and the bass player I never played with before. I played with Alvin Queen many times and I played with Dotto many times. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it feels very good to me. You know, the guitar player played very good rhythm guitar. Oh, yeah. The bass player walked very good time, good sound. So it's fine. What do you think of the concept? <laughs> ah, aha. Uh -huh. Now the shoe is on the other foot. <laughs> what? 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 Que cosa? Yesterday you told me that uh, Dabu Moroni is one of your idols. So, do you remember? No. No, one of your heroes. CRS. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can show you. <laughs> you know why? Because as a musician, we are influenced by everything we hear. Whether we are outside and we hear the little birdies go, that's, that's a song, very natural. Um, but we are influenced by um, everything we hear. And I, I really appreciate Dado because Dado plays in many styles of piano mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and usually most piano players don't play stride mm -hmm. they don't play boogie they don't play bebop they don't play uh, intervallic improvisation like McCoy Tyner with a lot of force, he can do all of that, and that's why he's one of my heroes. <laughs> Besides, he's a nice guy, and he, when, I, when I come to Italy, I call him and he tells me, if you're in this city, you go to this restaurant. <laughs> because when you're traveling, hey, you know the restaurant where we got the tickets to eat dinner? <laughs> Not so good. Not so good, Otello. Everybody's very nice. Everybody's very nice. But the food? Eh, it's okay. It's okay. But it's not like Gautiero uh, Marchese. San Domenico in Imola. Ah, see, I've been there. See, I, I know. Pizza Piola in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Because many Italians live in Argentina. If you don't know, they have very good pizza. They have pizza with, how you say, arugula? Arugula. And breathe. Good. <laughs> no more questions. <laughs> some, some. Uh, your first teacher. You already asked question. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Your, your first teacher <laughs> was Bill Cat Catalano. Is right. Yes, he was half Spanish, mm -hmm. half Italian. What did of you uh, classical uh, trumpet playing? Uh, 
classical trumpet playing. Mm -hmm. What about it? Uh, well, I don't understand the mm -hmm. question. Uh, what kind of uh, teaching he did to he you? Did teach you. Uh, uh, he, Arbon method. Uh, Arbon, Saint Jacob. Saint Jacob. Okay. Just those two books. Okay. You know, uh, characteristic studies. He took me through some of those. We played duets out of Saint Jacob. Mm -hmm. um, my other part of the lesson. There were three part lesson: the classical or the you know the technical. Mm -hmm. Then part of the lesson was developing range, the high notes, and then the third part of the lesson. Dizzy Gillespie solos. Ah, yes. <laughs> and my lesson was only 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. So each section was 10 minutes. Ah, yes, okay. Uh, what is your upper range you now? Uh, triple IC? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is not so important. No. no. Because it, it depends on what I'm hearing. Mm -hmm. You know, when you play the trumpet, no matter what you play, mm -hmm. you have to be able to hear it. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to hear it first. So there are many pe people you say, ha, ah, and you say, okay, sing that note, ha, ah, and they go, ha, ah, ha, ah, 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 ah. and I say, look, your lesson for the week is to sit at the piano, ah. Uh, 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 ha, uh, and sing. You have to learn how to sing. And, and, and I think in Europe, in the, in the music education, one of the things that I think is really missing in, in, in American uh, education for music is the solfege. I mean, you do it so much better over here than over there. But one of my one of my trumpet teachers that I go to study the trumpet with, who played with the New York Philharmonic, mm -hmm. he's a master at solfege. He's singing you all the excerpts from from Mahler and the, all the tr Strauss and all of, he's singing all of that stuff to you in solfege. And that allows you to go from key to key. It <laughs> <laughs> just makes you a better musician. No more. <laughs> no manja. And put your shoes back on. <laughs> That's it? That's the press conference? <laughs> it's a talk. <laughs> what about you guys? <clears throat> Look at my beautiful t-shirt. From New Orleans. I love the music of New Orleans. And all the jazz. I love the tart. I love you. I love Winton. I love everybody who play good jazz. And you know, Armstrong say two kind of music: the bad and the good. But that's Duke Ellington. Duke Ellington. <laughs> <laughs> right? Duke that's Ellington. Right. That's why the question I want to know if you know that. Are you testing me? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> The good and the bad is always subjective. Yes. It's always an opinion. Mm -hmm. yes. And everybody's opinion is valid. Mm -hmm. You know, so there are many people that don't like the way I play the trumpet. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can't please everybody. There are many people who don't like Louis Armstrong. Mm -hmm. There are many people I saw Duke Ellington get booed at the Berlin Jazz Festival. Mm -hmm. And then they gave stat uh, they gave uh, What's my man's name? The crazy guy the, with the round glasses from Chicago and his song titles are Math Formulas. Anthony Braxton. They, they, they boo Duke Ellington and when Anthony Braxton play, they give him a standing ovation. So, so you know, it is all of those things that make the world go round. You know, when 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 Dizzy when Dizzy was playing, the press always talk about a, a war or a feud 
between him and Louis Armstrong. And Dizzy said some things about Louis Armstrong that Louis Armstrong uh, was hurt by. And so Louis Armstrong says some things about beboppers. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't know how to play a melody and they can do it all of this stuff. And, but I asked Dizzy, I said, In the in the in the in the books and in the press, it says that you and Louis Armstrong hated each other, because I know that Louis Armstrong lived in this house, and then you walk around the corner, and Dizzy Gillespie had his house, and they were neighbors. He said, and I said, Dizzy, what about that? He said, Oh man, we were good friends, and he said one time, on July the fourth, which is Monday. He went over to Louis Armstrong's house to wish him happy birthday. And he knocked on his wife, let him in, and he's sitting. And Louis Armstrong, hey, Pop, yeah, wait a minute. And Louis Armstrong went in the back and came out with a gift for Dizzy Gillespie on Louis Armstrong's birthday. And that knocked Dizzy out. He loved the fact that he did that. And, but then I asked him, well, why don't, didn't you say anything like that in the press? And I think Dizzy believed that in the end, the truth would come out. So maybe it's me talking about that. Maybe it's somebody like Clark Terry talking about that when he and Dizzy used to go over to, to Louis' house and Louis said, come on, fellas, sit down and let me tell you about the history of jazz. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a lesson for them too. Mm. Even though Clark Terry is now... 90 years old. Mm -hmm. You know, he still talks of, speaks of Louis Armstrong with reverence that you would think he was still 10 years old. But that's the way it is. Mm -hmm. So you like. All I kinds like of jazz, like uh, Winton say, if you have to swing. And if you have the blues Don't come to my press conference talking about Winton. <laughs> <laughs> Feeling and swing. Blues and swing. Art jazz. I love that. But there is so much more to it than that. Yeah. <laughs> because the true jazz. makes you feel better about life. The, the really great jazz uplifts you. Mm. Great music, whether it's jazz, whether it's rock and roll, or funk, or hip hop, whether it's pop music, whether it is classical European traditional music, great music, Chinese opera, Japanese, uh, no theater, no kabuki. It uplifts the spirit. Yeah. And you can be in a bad mood, and you put on music, and it changes you. It changes your mood, it changes your emotion, it changes the way you feel. And that's what any great music. You know, it doesn't have to be blues, it doesn't have to be swing. You know, you could put on. Uh, you. Here, here, here's the doctor is in now. The doctor. Can you? Here. Yeah. Put, put, put this on the chair there. <laughs> tell me, or tell us, if you don't mind sharing, one of the things that make you sad. Une chose qui te rend triste. Um, Trist. What? Uh, mm, a lot of things. <laughs> mm. No, 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 no. Um, oh, you could just say something like war. You know, people, like, people, like, people killing each racism. other. Racism. Racism. Yeah, racism. Yeah. Do you think that gentleman back there is racist? Mm -hmm. I don't want to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> 
You are a politician? No. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, 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 yes. <laughs> okay, racism. So, so then, I would say to you, put on music by Benny Goodman Quartet. I know. Mm -hmm. You know, you have Gene Krupa, you have Benny Goodman, but you also have Lionel Hampton yeah. and Teddy Wilson. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for recordings, that's some of the first. Is there, there were people that recorded together from different races before that in jazz, mm -hmm. but that's some of the first and most important. And you put on something like Moon Glow and just listen yeah. to four people from totally different backgrounds, totally different races, play together. And that's one of the things that music does, mm -hmm. is it brings people together. Mm -hmm. It's not supposed to push people apart. It brings people together. So if you are sad about racism, you listen to something that brings people together like that. Exactly. If you are sad about, um, say you have a fight with your wife, <laughs> it all happens. Or you have a fight with your husband, or you have a fight with your boyfriend because you are mad at him because he hasn't asked you to marry him yet, or marry him. something like that. You, you're waiting for him to marry, and you say, what's taking him so long? Ah, he should marry me. I have been with him for five years, and if he doesn't want to marry me, I'm going to leave him. So then you put on some music that is very romantic. So for me, that could be something like Clifford Brown with strings. Oh. That could be Sarah Vaughan singing a ballad. You know, if you look at my iPod, I have many different things on there. Music from Africa, music classical, Arthur Rubinstein, flamenco, classical guitar, Paganini caprices. Trumpet players playing classical, but they're playing violin concerti, Tchaikovsky violin, and tons of blues, some jazz, some funk. No hip hop. <laughs> no hip hop. That's not my thing. But, you know, listen to, you know, put on some Sarah Vaughan when you're with your boyfriend and he goes, oh. And then he said, oh, I love you. <laughs> and then everything is okay. Then the next day you could yell at him for not picking up his socks. Mm -hmm. So you know, there, there, you know, for me, there, there is a lot of different music for my different moods. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there are sometimes I have to be in a very special mood. I have to be very strong emotionally to be able to listen to some Billy, certain Billy Holiday, because it is so emotional for me. You know, if I listen to Strange Fruit, I can't listen to that every day. It has to be um, a day when I have the right emotion. I'm strong enough to handle it. Otherwise, I'll be crying like a baby. And you know the song Strange Fruit. You know what that's about, right? Mm -hmm. About when they used to lynch yeah. black people. And, 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 and people used to, white people used to have picnic. You know, they used to go and they bring their family and they sit on the grass and they eat food and watch it watch somebody get hung yeah and there are pictures of you know there's a picture book of that and I take that to my students and I show it to them and I say when you see those pictures what do you feel because many young people and many males many men aren't so in touch with their feelings you know, we don't know what we feel. <laughs> if we feel anything. Well, we try, we try to be men about it, mm -hmm. and we block things off, and it's not so good either. So I say to my students, what do you feel when you see that? And I had one student write a song like, da, 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 a happy song. I say, are you insensitive? Mm -hmm. Are you not understanding 
what this is. So I make him do it again, write something else. And then some of these students have never written music before. They never wrote their own music. And they come up with some stuff. There was a, I had a, at my school where I teach, there's an exchange program with a conservatory in Amsterdam. So they send students from Amsterdam to New York to study at our school, and we send students from New York to Amsterdam to study. And this young lady was a singer. Her name was Kendra Van Ness. And she wrote in English words. And I looked at the words, and they were very powerful words. But she didn't know how to put the music to the words. So there was a very excellent young piano player, and I said, play this type of chord, a minor chord with a major seventh, and there's you know, some clusters in there, and some bitonality, and I said, just play some of these chords and just hold them. And then I said to her, I don't want you to sing these words, I want you to read them. And I said, okay, you play the chord. He went, blang, and she read her words. And I looked around, and, and one of the kids started crying. And he was a, you know, Latino mm -hmm. trombone player. Mm -hmm. So you know how unsensitive trombone players are. <laughs> <laughs> and and um, that is when... I know that I'm a good teacher. Mm. When you can get students to experience something and have an understanding of how the emotion is connected to the music. So that it is not always blues and swing. <laughs> Although mm -hmm. what she wrote was, you know, not da 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 da. I do without a lot of things. Da 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 da. Keep your t-shirt sharp. No, no, no. It's not like that. You know, if you listen to, um, you know, you listen to classical music, you know, there's some blues in there sometimes. So it, it's all connected. It's all connected. As they say in Japan, the monk, the monks say, there are many paths to the top of the mountain. Mm -hmm. A lot of different ways to get up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay? Capiche? Capito. Capito. The capital of the Switzerland is Bern. The capital of France is Paris capital of the United States is Washington, D.C. The capital of Tokyo, or uh, Japan, is not like that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, folks. Hey. Hi. Bonjour. Ciao. <laughs> Young musician? Yes. What does he play? Guitar. Guitar? Yes. There are seats right here in front. <laughs> Coca-Cola for breakfast. Oh. <laughs> it's okay. He's not going to knock over your camera. It's not mine. The camera. Softly. <laughs> so how long have you been playing? Three years. Who do you like to listen to? You have to translate, you don't know what I'm saying. Um uh, uh. rock. Per esempio, il rock chitarrista. Nessuno. In particolare. Thanks, Walter. 
Okay, no matter, you gonna translate now? No matter what instrument, I mean, no matter what music you like. Tell him. Non importa quale tipo di musica ti piace. You have to master your instrument. Devi essere bravo a... Imparare, sì, col tuo strumento. And to master, and to master your instrument, you must learn many different styles of playing the guitar. Mm -hmm. Per conoscere il tuo strumento, saperlo suonare, devi conoscere diversi stili uh, della chitarra. Mm -hmm. And you're not allowed to have Coca-Cola or gelato for breakfast. E niente Coca-Cola o gelato. So, so if I were to say to you um, the name Julian Bream. Do you know? Se lui ti dovesse dire questo nome, Julian Bream. You lo conosci? No. Segovia. Mm. Segovia. Conosci? Segovia. No. Charlie Christian. Charlie Christian. No. Django Reinhardt. No. You have Eric Clapton. No. No. <laughs> Eddie Van Halen. Van Halen. Van Halen. No. So you have. What is your name? Alessandro. Alessandro, you have much homework. <laughs> no, 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 no. You, you have much. You know, you have much work to do. And when 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 I did an interview with with uh, Yannick and Francesca yesterday, I talked about two things that Sigmund Freud speak about: work and love. Mm. Arbeit und Liebe. Mm -hmm. And how old are you? Twelve. 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 That's the age when you think about girls all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him what I say. quando pensa alle ragazze. That's good. That's, that's normal. But whatever you are twelve. And when I was twelve, I played the trumpet and I listened to Dizzy Gillespie and I buy records for Chet Baker, Chet Baker with fifty Italian strings and Maynard Ferguson and Roy Eldridge and Louis Armstrong. I buy any trumpet record that my family could afford because we're not very rich. But the main thing was I loved the trumpet. So you must love the guitar. You yeah. must really, really have a passion mm -hmm. for the guitar. And when your teacher, do you have a, ask him if he has a teacher? A maestro? Uh, si. How long, how much does his teacher tell him to practice? Quanto ti consiglia di allenarti il tuo maestro? Uh. Uh, ogni giorno le due ore così. Two hours a day. Mm -hmm. That's good. But if you really love the guitar, you don't put a time limit on your practice. Mm -hmm. Se ami la chitarra non metti i paletti o dei limiti di orario. You practice studiare. as much as you can. Quanto, so, quanto so one day it may be eight hours. Mm -hmm. One day, one day it may be four hours. One day maybe your family takes a trip, and you don't even have two hours to practice. Maybe you have thirty minutes to practice. Dei giorni dove ti alleni otto ore, altri magari quattro gli altri giorni dove vai uh, col tuo papà a vedere la partita e magari ti hai solo mezz'ora. So there there are some things that I tell you, want to tell you. One, 
Do not practice mistakes. <laughs> non allenarti, non allenare gli errori. So that means if you have a difficult musical phrase, you must practice it perfectly, slowly. Yeah. It must go lento. Mm -hmm. Se ti trovi davanti yeah. a una difficoltà, un passaggio difficile, una frase difficile, non allenarla in modo sbagliato. Prenditi il tempo, falla più lenta, ecco, ma giusta. It is much better to play slowly and correctly than fast and wrong. <laughs> È più giusto fare le cose lentamente, ma appunto giuste, che veloce e buttarle lì in modo sbagliato. Understand? Capito? Sì. Mm -hmm. Ok. The other part I mentioned a little bit earlier about different styles. Mm -hmm. So you should listen to as many guitar masters as you can. Mm -hmm. Devi ascoltare il più possibile i grandi maestri della chitarra. Dei diversi stili, può essere jazz, può essere rock, può essere... So all, of the, so all of the people that I mentioned to you earlier, and I asked you if you know, they are masters of the guitar. So one of the things you must do is read. Read about the guitar. Read about great guitarists. Listen to great guitarists. Now, it's very easy for your generation, because everybody got an iPod. And you can have thousands of guitar players on your iPod. Devi informarti, leggere su questi grandi musicisti, grandi chitarristi, quelli a cui hai fatto i nomi, i grandi maestri. Informarsi, ascoltare. Um, diceva che è semplice, oggi con l'iPod si, si, si carica molto velocemente. Sì, 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 ha una grande diversità in un piccolo aggeggio. Today is my wife's birthday. But I want you to write down your name, your address, and your phone number, and I'm going to send you some guitar music. <laughs> Devi lasciargli le tue coordinate, uh, indirizzo, eccetera. E poi lui ti manderà un po' di materiale di chitarristi che puoi ascoltare. Ok. And one Playboy magazine. È una rivista del Playboy. Non l'abbiamo comprato quest'anno perché a scuola non è uscito quest'anno. Ah, okay. Abbiamo il numero da non ascolto. What did daddy say? Daddy say, ah ah ah. So, will you do that for me? Gli lasci le coordinate, l'indirizzo. You know, so, so I sent you some, you know, if we listen to somebody like Paco de Lucia, flamenco, from Spain. Like two hours from here. Unbelievable guitar. And they play, you have to let your fingernails grow, and they play no pick. John Williams, you play Bach. Beautiful. Charlie Christian, Django Reinhardt. Nuage. Connaissez-vous Nuage? Conosci il brano Nuage? No. And then, and then people like uh, Jim Hall, you know, Barney Kessel. There's some great guitar players out there. B.B. King. You know B.B. King? B.B. King? Do, 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 do. My mama says she don't love me. Do, 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 do. But she could be jiving too. <laughs> so will you? Okay. 
Do you have questions for me? Hai delle domande da fargli? No. When do I get my Playboy? <laughs> I would like that you tell maybe about uh, something about your personal relationship to to Trump. That, uh, well, I, well, okay, that's fine. My trumpet, and I saw it last night. The gold is wearing off, so I have to have it redone. But this trumpet is a, is a brand called Schilke, and it's made in, in the United States, in, in, um, just outside of Chicago. And it's a very, it's a very different instrument than the, the trumpets that are played in orchestras, or even than the trumpet like Irving Mayfield uses, or Winton used, they use that heavy Monet trumpet. Mm -hmm. um, but to me, my sound, I think, is very much uh, from Louis Armstrong and Roy Eldridge and maybe early, earlier Dizzy, because one of the things that I look for is clarity. I want the tone to be very clear. When I play a note, I want to clear the air of bad vibrations. And that's one of the things I, I think about before I go on stage. You know, with the people smoking. <laughs> you know, I want to clear the air. Um, so my tone is very clear. But I can adjust my tone. You mentioned Round Midnight and playing in the style of different trumpet players. Harmon mute, please. Uh, uh, no, other side. Yeah, right here. No, 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 right here. Harmon yeah. mute. Harmon. 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 Okay. No stem. Take the stem out. And plunger. So my trumpet, you know, there are many different stories, but, but basically, Ooh. you can sound the same on any trumpet. Mm -hmm. it, it, you know, it's Louis Armstrong, I play his horns at his house. And if any of you ever go to New York, mm -hmm. you should go by Louis Armstrong's house it's, and museum. Mm -hmm. it's a, they do tours and it's great. Mm -hmm. You can hear tapes of him, you can see the archives. They're doing a fantastic job with Louis Armstrong. But I play his horn and I don't like it. Mm -hmm. It's very different than this. Um, so my horn I want people to hear each note that I play. So if I'm playing um, round midnight and I'll start with Louis Armstrong and I'll go through some different trumpet players stylistically. So Louis Armstrong is Cootie Williams, only Cootie. Who 
Who's that? Roy. Roy. Yeah, yeah, that's Roy. Roy. And then you might say. <laughs> simply, very um, melodically, you know, it's just a melody, yeah, something like that, and that's all, I don't need to play no more, so you learn different styles, <laughs> what's his name, Jean-Marie Uren, what's his name again, Alessandro, Alessandro, excuse me, gelato, I teach you now, Coconut, <laughs> banana. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Artisana, down the other end of the, the road. Yeah. yeah. So Just as you go up the hill, coconut and banana. <laughs> <laughs> so you must write. You must write your information for me. You must write, tell him you must write his information for me. No, 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 wait a minute, watch it. Wait a minute, my passport. Here. So this trumpet, you know, I've been playing for, I don't know, maybe five, six years, and it's the same model that I play, I don't know, maybe 20 years. And then before that, I played the same company, but it's different. They ch made some changes that I like better now. So my trumpet is a little bit heavier, but if you get, with the trumpet, if you make it too heavy, mm -hmm. to me, it doesn't sound vibrant enough. It doesn't sparkle enough. It sounds a little bit too too much like a flugelhorn. So I just played a flugelhorn. Oh, there's a birdie up here. Other questions, sir? Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> well, uh, grazie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for holding me. Avec plaisir. <laughs> and to go, I play for you Roy Eldridge solo. Mm. Yeah. Ha <laughs> ha